Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from EGATSEC. The good people at Banggood has sent me another product to review and unbox just for you guys. And here on my table is the GameSir X2 Bluetooth mobile gaming controller. Now I know the box looks a bit beat up, have to blame the couriers or the delivery guys who sent it to me, but I am confident that when Banggood sent me this item that it was in perfect condition. So let's hope that the controller survived even though the box is a bit beat up. So what are we waiting for guys? Let's get this unboxing started. So as usual, uh, this is what I like about GameSir products. They've got a pull tab right there. You just have to pull it. So I wouldn't be needing my trusty pocket knife for this unboxing. So seeing this actually makes me more confident that the controller actually survived because this is actually a pretty sturdy case. So even though the box is not in good shape, this case should protect the Bluetooth controller just fine. So let's see what's inside. So I've got the GameSir X2 logo here on the top and it has a black and red color combination on the case which I am a fan of so let's open it up there you go guys so it actually reminds me of a PSP case or I used to have a Sony PSP and it did look a bit similar to this got a red box here that says accessories let's go ahead and see what's inside that's it so you've got Game series stickers for all you sticker lovers out there. Put that aside. And you've got a USB A to USB C charging cable. And this is the thumb grips that you can actually replace in case these get worn out. And I think these are different sizes. So the one installed right now is a bit small. So I'm not sure if you can see it. So uh, some people would prefer it to be bigger than this. Um, I think this is too small for me. I'll probably sw swap it out with one of these bigger ones. So. Let's do that later in the video. And you've got quality check. It's done. So you know this is a quality product. And you've got the usual extended warranty if you register your product online. So just scan the QR code and you'll get an extended warranty of up to six months. And I think that six months warranty is pretty cool guys. And of course you've got the user manual. So let's see what's in here. So it's just usual, you got, when it's charging, you've got the steady green light, that means it's in use, steady red is low, flashing green is charging, and steady green is fully charged or the battery is full. So in order to connect the phone by Bluetooth, you have to long press the A and the home button until the gamepad turns on. So similar to this guy, the GameSir G4 Pro, right? So let's pick up the controller. Let's put that case aside. So what I really like about GameSir products is that the part where you hold the controller is actually rubberized so you know that it's not going to slip out of your hands because if it's just pure plastic then it has a tendency to slip especially during intense gaming sessions. And you've got an L1 and L2, R1 and R2. So this tells me that this is going to be a perfect companion for people who love playing emulated games on their mobile phones. So with the distance that it actually opens up, I'm pretty confident that this will fit most if not all uh, Android phones out on the market right now. And of course right here in the middle you get a plastic cover which you should be removing and it actually covers that GameSir logo right there. So pretty cool attention to detail right there guys. So as I mentioned, you've got an L stick here, an R stick over there. So this is actually a proper controller and once you put a phone in the middle, so it's, it's going to feel more like a portable console. So not unlike the Sony PSP and Nintendo Switches. Though of course, it depends on the phone that you're going to be using. If you're going to be using a small phone, you're going to have a less than stellar experience just because the display size will be a lot smaller than those other portable gaming consoles. So luckily, I've got the Lenovo Legion 2 Pro here which is actually one of the bigger gaming phones out now and I'm concerned because this is actually a bit raised on the back because of this fan and if you're actually going to be using it with this controller I have a feeling that the fan will actually be blocked and you're not going to be getting optimal airflow with the internal fans of this thing so let's go ahead and try to change out the thumbsticks so I think it comes in small medium large I actually prefer the bigger ones so let's see what's the difference 
These are actually just slightly bigger than those ones. So there's two small ones and four bigger ones. No apparent size difference between the four are my eyes playing tricks on me. So let's see how easy it is to actually remove it. Doesn't seem to be straightforward guys. Give me a second here. What do you know? You can actually put it on top of these rubber ones so you don't actually have to remove the ones that are currently there. And there you go guys. Now it feels like a proper controller and I'm probably going to be enjoying playing with this thing. So let's see if this thing is holding a charge. So we can go ahead and actually start testing this thing. Okay, let's see where this thing plugs in. So it's at the bottom. And just to do a quick size test whether this controller can actually hold the biggest gaming Android phone right now which is the Black Shark 3 Pro which has a whopping 7 inch display. Go ahead and see and slide it in if it can actually fit. Tough luck guys, the Black Shark 3 Pro is too big to fit in this controller. So you actually have to stick with the GameSir G4 Pro. This thing can handle it. And it's going to be a bit top heavy, but you're not going to get the handheld console gaming experience. So Black Shark 3 Pro is a no-go. How about the Lenovo Legion 2 Pro? Okay, that seems to be too big as well. Not feeling good about this one, guys. Let's try the last one. And just to be safe, I actually removed the case on my ROG Phone 5. And let's slide it in. Okay, I got it in, guys. You can see that flex i think this is a bit too big for the controller so it just barely manages to fit the rog phone 5 so that tells me this is going to work as well on the red magic 6 pro the red magic 6 and the red magic 6r hang on guys let me get the black shark 4 pro that i've got and let's see if that will fit all right so i've got the black shark 4 pro here let's remove the rog phone 5 let's make sure to remove the case so i've still got the cooler compatible case on the black shark 4 pro but i'll be removing it okay so the black shark 4 pro is actually a better fit on this thing though it, there is still a bit of a flex so it might be just normal i think it actually depends on the camera bump not sure if you can see it from the gap but it's actually making the phone not sit flat with the back of the controller case so let me try it the other way so if you put it in the other way with your camera bump right here at the bottom end or on the right side of the controller, that actually sits on the gap created once you pull apart the two sides. So I think this is the way it's meant to be used. Though of course your phone is going to be looking like it's upside down. It's pretty good guys but most of the games that I'm going to be testing is on the ROG Phone 5. So let me try to put that in again. So before we go ahead and test games with the ROG Phone 5, the left and right thumbsticks actually feel pretty good and it's very smooth and the buttons though a bit small they, they are pretty clicky and the d-pad also feels good and everything else on the controller seems pretty well laid out l1 and r1 has pretty good feedback as well so you know when you're pressing them so it does feel like a proper controller so once again let me put in the rog phone 5 now there isn't much of a flex because I actually put the top of the phone on the right side so the camera bump is actually not hitting anything and you've got a pretty good fit on the controller. So I actually said on the manual to press A and the home button and which one here is the home button? Based on the user manual, you can actually use the controller with games that don't support the controller. So I'll be testing that out later. So I'm going to be using the default first which is the A and the home and the home button actually turns out to be this one right there so let me try to do a pairing there you go you can see the blue light is flashing so let's go to bluetooth connect it to that one it says gamesir x2 seems to be working let's go ahead and test out some games as I mentioned earlier on the video, this is going to be a perfect companion for playing emulated games and I've got the PSP version right here got God of War running let's test it out
God of War on the PSP looks pretty good. Let's try out the other games that I've got. So Tatsunoko vs Capcom or in general fighting games is perfectly playable with this controller. I was actually able to perform all the moves that I wanted but I guess that the emulator wasn't performing because there were some slowdowns and some stuttering which actually affected my gameplay but it has nothing to do with the controller itself. The controller works perfectly fine. I've installed or downloaded the Xbox app and I'm going to see if I can actually play my Xbox games using the controller. So let me just sign in. Really happy guys, the controller works just fine, no additional setup needed and this is my console. Let's try to run a quick game of Dead or Alive. Okay, so the home button or that button right there works same as the home button on your Xbox console. Alright guys, thoroughly impressed with the Game Sir X2 controller. I actually forgot that I'm playing on a mobile phone because this actually makes me feel like I'm playing on a PSP console or even a Nintendo Switch. And one good thing about this, since this is primarily a Bluetooth controller, this is going to work for both your Android and your iOS devices. I also received the controller directly from GameSir themselves but they actually sent me the controller that has a lightning port on the left side so you're actually limited to just using iOS devices on that one. But the advantage that that one has over this Bluetooth controller is you don't have to worry about any kind of latency since it is a direct connection with the phone and controller. But based on my testing with this device, it seems pretty good and now uh, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I think I'll set aside the test because in order to actually use this controller with games that, that don't support it natively, you actually have to scan the QR code on the user manual and install the games or application. So I'm going to be testing that on a separate video and let's see if I can actually get controller support back in one of my favorite games which is Genshin Impact. So overall guys, I can highly recommend the GameSir X2 Bluetooth controller. Put up the purchase link on the video description below. So if this is one piece of tech that you also want to get, Please feel free to use the purchase link and make use of my promo code that I'm going to be flashing on screen and including on the video description as well. So with that said, let me know what you think of this controller and I'd love to discuss it with you guys on the comment section down below. But until then, a sub would be massively appreciated. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification, and see you all in my next one.